All right, welcome back to uh, Sawmill Business Saturday. I'm coming to you from a park because uh, I gotta find some time to do this. <laughs> it's uh, it's a good thing, but it's been busy. Uh, it's just hard to find time sometimes. Uh, so I just kind of want to run through some of the finer details of what we did when we were first starting off, like from the business side and how we set it up. Uh, basically, from the get-go, when we started really doing it on our own. Uh, we kind of dabbled in a few things ahead of time or beforehand just kind of cash um, but we ca when the nest cabins went away uh, it was kind of like okay we're self-employed you know we're, we're doing this and this is what we're doing we're doing sawmilling we're doing renovations and and that's it that that was the objective so as soon as that happened first thing we did was we opened an LLC with North Carolina with the state and that was a pretty simple uh, thing to do it was basically just fill out a form, a couple papers, and um, and send it in. I think it was 100 bucks, 150 bucks, something like that. I mean, Sarah did it. it it's easy. Um, not that that means anything, but uh, it was easy for me, is what I'm saying, because I didn't do it. So that that's the easiest thing to do. Is something you don't have to do. Uh, and then that's one LLC that we have that covers everything we do. And that includes sawmill and the contracting and then Sarah's sewing. And the reason we did that is so we've got one LLC, we've got one bank account, one set of taxes, that's it. If we tried to separate those, we'd have triple the amount of stuff to keep track of. And uh, it's just not necessary. So we've got the one LLC, Ward Enterprises, that uh, this is the only time anyone ever hears the name because we have a doing business as. And that's a form we've submitted with the county and that basically says, okay, this is our business name, and we've got three business names that we work under. Um, that's WNC Portable Sawmilling, Ward Renovations, and then Sarah Classic Sewing. Um, and then so any income or expense we have on any of those three entities all goes into one pot. And, um, and so we found that's been pretty helpful. We've got one bank account. Um, again, it, it works under any of those, so I can take a check for portable saw milling or, or Sarah Classic Sewing or whatever. And that's all legit and you know feel like a real business there. Um, the bank account was free because we're a small enough small business. Uh, I think once you get over to a certain amount of transactions or money, I'm not really sure they might charge you, but um, you know, so if I get to that point, it, it may not, I may not worry too much. Um, so, and as far as counting the beans, we've got, uh, we've signed up for QuickBooks online they have a desktop version, but it, it seemed easier and more straightforward to do the online thing. And it's simpler, it doesn't have as much stuff, which uh, I don't really know what all the fancy stuff is anyway. So it's got everything I need. I can keep track of accounting or, or my uh, when I'm buying stuff or when I make money, I can write invoices. Uh, it'll send invoices, I can take a payment through QuickBooks, it'll do credit cards, it'll do all that stuff. Um, and then every time I buy something, it'll it'll pop up and I say business or personal or whatever, and it categorizes all that stuff. Um, mileage, it's got an automatic mileage tracker on my phone. And so it'll say, hey, you drove 20 miles today. And I'll say business or personal or whatever. And it keeps track of all that stuff. Um, and then uh, the other thing that it, that's really nice about that is it integrates in with the taxes and so with being a small business, self-employed, whatever you want to call this, um, we've got to do quarterly taxes. So that's kind of a projected income tax uh, and that's due quarterly. And so you've got, to, you've got to keep up on your taxes in order to know what you're going to pay, uh, pay quarterly. So if I, you know, you just got to keep up on that stuff uh, to, be, to be legal and, and up to snuff. Um, so QuickBooks or something like that. I don't know if there's a competitors. I'm sure there are, but um, that was easy. We, we really like that. We can go into more detail uh, if that's of interest to you, um, but that's, that's, been real, uh, that's been real helpful to, to keep us going and not have to worry about that kind of stuff. We put a lot of pictures on there. We, we put a lot of words. Thank you. You are so sweet. <laughs> All right, and as far as uh, marketing that we've done so far, uh, we've gotten Craigslist and Facebook. We go on there and we we put we try to put good ads on there with good pictures, 
and pretty well descriptions of what we're doing and whether it's a sawmill ad or a or renovation ad or whatever we're trying to do um, and we'll have different ads for like um, countertop ins like hey you know you want a countertop install we can do that and then that's all that ad does and we have good pictures of different, different countertops we've done and pricing on there I mean I try to be up front with the pricing in there and same thing with the sawmilling you know I'll put that in different sections and, and have good pictures I have my pricing on there I have good description a lot of the competitors a lot of the other guys out there uh, at least for sawmilling just for instance it'll be like sawmill services call for info and they don't really have anything out there and uh, so I want my ad to stand out um, above there so I certainly go through competition and, and I'll search sawmill or I'll search whatever and try to see what other ads are out there and I want to make sure my ad looks better than their ad um, so that's helped both with Facebook and with uh, Craigslist uh, also we've got carb magnets or I've got them on the truck on both sides and on the back it's just clear portable sawmill it's got a pic got a nice picture on it it's got our phone number uh, obviously don't put pricing on there because it's not it just doesn't work that well but um, we've gotten us we've gotten several jobs from that just driving around hey portable sawmill that exists and um, you know it, it kind of gets gets it in there you know just driving around people will see it and they'll, then it may not they may not have a uh, stack of logs sitting there but when they see it maybe later down the road a month six months a year uh, they may remember that that exists and then go to search and then eventually find us so ev not everything we're doing is like necessarily an ad we're trying to get a customer today or tomorrow um, you know we're trying to get the word out that we exist this service exists and this can be done and it and it's just getting the word out so that you know whatever you got to do to get the word out uh, we also got business cards I try to try to make the cards kind of I don't want to say flashy, but um, eye-catching. And I've also got a Doyle log scale on the back. And for those of you interested in trees, uh, in my mind, this just makes it that much more likely you're going to keep it. You know, if it's just a guy's business card, you may not keep it. But if it's got some good information available, uh, you may keep it for just for reference so I think the the door log scales is pretty applicable in this uh, in this case and somebody who does forestry or just has an interest you know may may have an interest in keeping it because of that um, so in my mind that's uh, that's a good thing to do uh, as far as giving it out I try to give this out everybody I can, anyone will take it I give it to them uh, anytime I meet somebody for for whatever um, you know, I, I'm, I try to give them the card. I go down to the farm store, the hardware stores, tractor supply, um, the feed stores, and I try. You know, if they'll if they'll let me leave a stack of cards, I leave a stack of cards. And and again, it just hey, I exist. You know, I'm not trying to push it, but I'm just trying to 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 say that I exist and this service exists. Uh, so the other thing I did that that I've gotten quite a bit of leads from, a lot, quite a bit of clients from. Uh, that I didn't think I would was talking to the local sawmill guy down the road and that's you've seen him in a couple other videos in the past I've, I've actually cut for him and I kind of went in there just curious trying to see what he does I knew he had a wood miser but I I basically was just trying to figure out what he's doing so I I wasn't going to compete with him not that I'm trying to poach his customers because that's certainly not what I was trying to do the guy's been there 30 years or whatever um, I was trying to see what he is doing or what he's not doing to make sure that I'm doing something he's not. So I'm able to provide a service that doesn't exist. If I was trying to compete with him, uh, that's, I don't know, I'd just rather not compete. If I can do something that no one else is doing, that's uh, much better in my book. So uh, that was just trying to figure that out. And when I told him that, hey, I do portable saw, and I told him that the mill I had, um, I mean, he was he was all for it. I mean, he was, uh, He's just a great guy, just nice, real nice as can be. Um, just a wonderful person to work with. And he's he's given me quite a bit of work and it's been nice because it's been like a day a week, re, pretty steady. And it's been nice for both of us because uh, it's just kind of a drum beat, a little bit filler work for me. He's pretty flexible with, uh, with when I can do it. 
and it's good for him because I can saw the logs that he can't handle. Because with a wide saw head, uh, I can do, I mean, 38, 40s, reasonably easy. Where he can't, he just can't do that. He's got a regular LT40 or an older LT40. So when they get above like 24, 28 inch diameter, they start to get pretty, pretty tricky for him. Um, so it's been really helpful for him to, to, I mean, it fills a niche. It fills, it fills a void. And he gets guys, he gets customers coming into him all the time that have logs, and he doesn't really like doing custom sawing. He doesn't like sawing other people's logs. Um, so he gets that fairly regularly, and he passes like almost all those to me. So I'll get, I don't want to say a phone call a week, but close to a phone call a week from uh, somebody who walked in and talked to him, and he referred them to me. Um, so being nice, being friendly, just introducing yourself to to other people in the area um, has, I mean, it's start. It's been working. We we've, we've been getting some pretty good, um, you know, pretty good amount of business come uh, staying busy out of that. Um, I mean, loggers in your area, tree services. Um, I haven't I haven't had any tree services like I haven't had any of those come through yet. But I've talked to several tree services about. Um, basically showing up on site I really want to do that it just hasn't uh, materialized yet but the idea of them uh, come showing up cutting the tree down and then me bringing the mill same day and immediately cutting into lumber you know that's just a cool thought that just seems like a really cool idea uh, so we all show up in the morning you know plow through get to work cut the tree down cut it into lumber stack it and at the end of the day there's a stack of lumber uh, waiting for the client there uh, so it's gonna happen I, I, I don't know when or where or how but it's gonna happen at some point and I'm looking forward to it I'm getting off track um, but anyway I think I've talked about everything I, I want to talk about and um, I, I hope this was helpful I hope it's informative and uh, you know thanks for watching and, and let me know if you got any questions or comments and uh, we'll catch you next time